Once you know the class name of the WMI class that you want to work with, actually getting it is pretty simple. Get WMI object. In fact, you're going to be typing this one so much that it's one of the ones you should just get used to the alias GWMI. Class is going to be, let's say, Win32BIOS. And that's all you have to plug in. Now the class parameter is positional, so you don't have to type the dash class part. You can just give it a class name in the first position. And if you want to do that from a remote computer, just punch in the remote computer's name. You can even do a comma-separated list of computers. Uh, WMI will contact those sequentially, one at a time. Um, if one of them fails, though, it will usually be able to continue trying all the rest of them that were in your list. So that's a nice little trick. Uh, if you need to specify an alternate credential, you can do that. You will be graphically prompted for the password. And just be aware that uh, it turns out I'm making a connection to my local computer, and you cannot provide alternate credentials for local connections. That's on purpose. Uh, so if you need to query the local WMI, you're going to be doing it with whatever account you used to run PowerShell itself. Now, there is some filtering built in. So we can do a get WMI object win32 logical disk and give it a filter parameter. The filter criteria is based in the WQL, or WMI query language, language, uh, and it looks a lot like SQL. So I might have something like drive type equals 3, uh, or you can use things like the like parameter. Um, let's see, device ID equals, this will be quotation marks, C colon, that gets me that one, uh, and you might have something like and the percent sign is actually the wildcard for the like parameter. And so that'll return everything with a single character, which of course any device ID is only going to have a single character. So that's always going to get you all of them. The nice part about that filter is it gets transmitted, just as, as plain text, off to whatever computer is processing the WMI query. So if you're connecting to a remote computer, it's the WMI service on that computer that's actually processing it. So you're only getting back the things that you asked for. Uh, this is a very efficient way to filter for things in WMI, as opposed to getting all of the instances and then using something like where object. Uh, using the filter parameter is much more efficient.